Today, we will uh, discuss about opening of succession and issues that are related to the concept of opening of succession. The whole the central question is when does succession happen? And what are the implications, what are the consequences, the legal consequences of opening of succession? That's regulated under Articles 826 as the following articles, and we will see the central issues. We will try to see the central points that are covered under these provisions, and we will also try to see the judgment uh, which uh, our colleagues were supposed to, to, to read. Let's read Article 826 first. And then we'll try to let's try to understand what the central issue, the central trust of that provision is. Article 826, as I uh, said earlier, is about opening of successions. It says where a person dies, where a person dies, the succession of such person called the deceased shall open at the place where he had his principal residence at the time. Of his place. Where a person dies, a succession of such person called the deceased shall open at the place where he had his principal residence at the time of his death. The first few words of this provision are at the heart of the law of succession. It starts off by saying, Where a person dies. Succession can, can only open if somebody dies. If there is no death, the whole chapter, the whole set, all the sections, all the provisions of the law of successions automatically become relevant. Without death, there is no succession. So the, whole, the opening of the law of succession and consequently the relevance of all the provisions in the law of succession is dependent on the, on the concept of death, on the happening of death. Death is a very relevant event for the law of succession. Without death, there is no law of succession. And the second point is where a person dies. The, 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 the timing for the opening of the law of succession is related to the timing of death. So succession opens when a person dies, it opens exactly at the time of death of that particular individual, which the law of successionist has decided to call a deceased. When an individual dies, he automatically becomes a deceased. And you saw the one that you the Legal personality there. Starting from the moment of death, human beings are called persons, right? They are called persons because they are depositories of rights and obligations. The moment an individual is born, he acquires rights as well as obligations. There is a possibility of that individual acquiring rights and obligations, and as a result of that concept of rights and obligations, that individual is called a person. Immediately after death, the basic attributes of personality are lost. What are the basic attributes of personality? The basic attributes of personality are the concepts of the concepts of rights and obligations. And it's also we are going to legally speak. Why is a person a person? No person was the land and job. Person, legally speaking, an individual is called a person because that individual has rights and obligations. And for physical persons, for human beings, that particular attribute is acquired at the time of birth. And these attributes, which have been acquired on the date of birth, are lost when that individual dies. <coughs> After death, there is no possibility of that entity having rights and obligations. Therefore, you cannot imagine, legally speaking, we cannot imagine 
somebody having rights and obligations after the event of death. Therefore, for the event, there are two events here. There is an event of death and death, and there is an event of death. The event of birth gives rights and obligations, but the event of death destroys those rights and obligations. And after that event, after the event of death, the individual who used to have rights and obligations is called the deceased. That individual is called the deceased. And the whole point of Article 826 and all the, the subsequent provisions is as to what happens to the rights as well as the obligations that were acquired at the inter during, the inter during this interval. There is an interval, an interval between life and death. That interval can be long or it can be short. But all individuals, all human beings are supposed, are assumed to have acquired some rights and obligations during this period. Therefore, what the law of successions tries to do is decide on how, decide on the fate of these rights and obligations that have to be acquired during the lifetime of that individual, during the time when that individual was a person. And so we so we're the 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 law calls him on calls that this is. These are the two points. They are, they are very, 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 very points that they are points, points for the law takers, but they are separate from our subsequent discussions. Where a person dies, the succession of such person called the deceased shall open at the place where he had his principal residence at the time of his death. When an individual dies, his succession or her succession opens exactly at the moment of the event of death. The moment an individual dies, the succession automatically opens. Therefore, the law of succession automatically becomes relevant. All the subsequent situations, anything that happens after the moment of death, automatically becomes the domain of the law of successions because succession has already opened. The moment of succession opens, all the events, all the issues that arise after the event of death usually are the domain of the law of succession. And the other point here is the question of where. I think you have discussed about the concept of residence. Yeah. So the residence will be inside and control it. Yes. Regarding the question of where. The law says succession opens at the time of death. Where does that succession open? It opens at the place of the principal residence of the deceased. An individual may die anywhere. But where does the succession open? The succession opens at the principal residence. I think you remember from your classes of the law of persons that an individual can possibly have a number of residences, right? Mm. Below the Tepeyak and so on. There's no residence in original. Like that. A person might have acquired a number of residences during his lifetime or during her lifetime. But the central point where the succession opens is the principal residence. And which of his residences is principal? And which one is not so principal is determined based on the, on the law of persons. And you have to try to remember your discussions about those provisions in your classes of the law of persons. The central points for uh, Article 826 1. Succession always opens when a person dies. Without death, there is no succession. And when does that succession open? It opens at the moment of death. The moment someone dies, the effect of succession, there is no interval between death 
and open your succession. And this is so crucial. This is so crucial. If somebody does attend M, the succession opens exactly at this time. Therefore, all the rights and obligations of the deceased, all the rights of uh, the rights and obligations of that individual of that of that deceased are automatically transferred to his heirs or legatees. Exactly at this point. Therefore, this timing is so important because that's when rights and obligations are transferred from the deceased to the heirs. When the timing of death of an individual is very important in the law of successions, as in many other legal transactions, as in the law of contracts, as in uh, wills, as in many other legal transactions, time is always important. Time is always important. In the law, the first article of the law of successions tells us. Uh, the time for the obligation of succession is the time when that individual, when an individual dies. Therefore, the, the concept of death is important for a number of reasons. One, it is important because without death there is no succession. We have to prove that there is death. If somebody cannot prove, prove that an individual has died, then there is no, he cannot win any case in the law of succession. And so, Russia and Germany will demand improve their development. The concept and the fact of this, the evil of this, is very crucial. Therefore, anyone who claims to have succeeded somebody else must first prove that somebody else is really dead. What can you do? What is the value of the material? The reality of the material is that that individual has died. That's why the law, the first provision of the law of succession, Starts off by saying, when, where a person dies without death, there is no succession. Without death, there is no inheritance. Without death, we, the concept of we, when we are dead, is irrelevant. Therefore, all the legal, the legal concepts, all the legal provisions, all of those disputes between individuals like the ones we, we heard about a little earlier become relevant only if there is death. Uh, we'll see more, many more interesting details about these things when we consider, consider the subsequent provisions. But try to remember for the time being that uh, the events of death, uh, however unfriendly, however unattractive it might be in real life, it is very interesting for the law of succession. Without the concept of death, we wouldn't have been. Uh, therefore, this is a very brief uh, about, about sub article 1. We'll see, we'll, we'll come back to it when we consider the other articles. We cut the return and cut the return, we'll come back to it. Let's read the article. Okay, when a person dies, when a person dies, succession of that deceased. That is that, that the deceased is not an individual anymore. It's not a person anymore because that individual has lost his rights and obligations. Death terminates rights and obligations. And if rights and obligations are terminated, then we cannot speak of personality because legal personality is always related to the concept of rights and obligations. Without rights and obligations, there is no legal personality. And if that, that entity, let's call that deceased, D, to make discussions easier. Let's call a deceased person D from now on. If, that, if somebody has died, what happens to the rights and obligations of that individual? We said, Article 1 of our civil code says, an individual is the subject of rights from the death of person. But for any, any person who has lived on anyone who has, who has been born automatically is, is a beneficiary of that article and therefore as a result of that article acquires rights and obligations. And if, the, if death terminates those rights and obligations, what happens to those rights and obligations? What do you think should happen to those rights and obligations? 
D has employee rights. D has assumed a number of obligations during his or her lifetime. And when that individual dies, when that individual becomes the deceased, and because of that, the fact, the intervening fact of this, if that individual loses the legal personality that has been attributed to him or to her during his lifetime, what happens to the rights and obligations? What should happen? What, what do you think should happen to those rights and obligations? Hmm? And I don't know. That's why we call him a person. If, it, if, if that entity didn't have rights and obligations, we wouldn't have called him a person. That's why we call individuals persons. The other so much of but legally speaking. Imagine biologically speaking, a human being is a human being because of other reasons, right? The biology number, legal personality at the end. In law, individuals are persons, we are persons, because we have rights and obligations. So what do you think should happen to those rights and obligations? Legal persons have rights and obligations. What happens to those rights and obligations? Which obligations and rights will be terminated? and which ones would be transferred to the heirs, and which ones would be transferred to people who are not heirs. This is what we'll see today. And sub-article gives us the, the basic direction. Sub-article 2 of Article 826 gives us the basic guideline. The rights and obligations of the deceased, which form the inheritance, shall pass to his heirs. This tells us a very central point in the law of successions in this country, as well as in many different systems. When we talk about inheritance, we are talking about rights and obligations. So it's not, it's not, the heirs are not entitled just to the rights. Anyone who takes the rights takes the obligations of them. So when we speak about succession, when we speak about devolution of succession from the deceased to somebody else. It can be X, it can be Y, it can be descendants, it can be ascendants. We'll see how that devolution takes place. But this devolution involves rights as well as obligations. Rights no obligations. It's not just rights. Somebody cannot pick the rights, but not the obligations. The whole idea of <coughs> the transfer is complete. It is the rights as well as the obligations that will be transferred to the next of kin. It can be the descendants, it can be the brothers and sisters, it can be the parents. We'll see how that devolution takes place. We will see how those individuals are picked in the subsequent sections. But remember for the time being that the law of inheritance is invested in rights as well as in the obligations. And you can imagine why. The successor, the heir or the negative, cannot just pick the rights and say, I don't care about the obligations. When a father dies, or when one of the ascendants dies. By the way, anyone in law is assumed to have assets and liabilities. And the law of succession is involved, is interested in streamlining those rights and obligations. It's not interested just in the rights, but in the, in the obligations as well. Why do you think is the law of succession is interested in the obligations? Why would the law care about transferring obligations to the to the heirs. The data of children to know as well as me if I go back. Why we transferring the rights to the descendants? It's not common, not that you also know the data of children. Or if it's a parent who pick who be who who take the uh, the succession, why should the obligations? of the disease be transferred to the parents. You are in effect saying the law says that succession is interested in the deceased, it is interested in the successors, but it is also interested in protecting the rights of creditors or self-parties. 
who might have had legal relationships with the deceased. Therefore, we have the loss, the concern, the interest of the death of sensation is not just the relationship between the deceased, between the person who died and his successors. But what should not be the more I should have carried on, but the other must have been each other. There is a social interest. There is a social interest. There is a public interest as well as individual interest of addressing the expectations of surviving creditors. Like the example we mentioned earlier, if somebody has borrowed money from the banks, of course that individual will have assets, but he has liabilities. Well, it is also liabilities which that individual incurred during his lifetime must somehow be assets. And that can only be that can only happen if the law of succession is interested in the obligations as well as the rights. But he is not is not looking is not just looking after the interests of the survivors. And so he would yes we are short interest in charity. Apart from the interests of the survivors. The law of succession tries to address, tries to protect, tries to streamline the expectations of all individuals who might have had legal relationships with the deceased. If the deceased had acquired rights during his lifetime, of course those rights will be transferred to his successors. But if that individual had imposed obligations on himself voluntarily, or if there are obligations which he assumed for one reason or another, those obligations must be discharged by his successors. But the question is that is, what type of rights and obligations would be transferred to the heirs, and what type of rights and obligations would, would be terminated when that individual dies? When I let Mr. Nagdetano be Kalalafu, when I let Mr. Nagdetano, how much we are about him, what we are about him, again, is a central question. The law of succession is interested. The law of succession kind of makes it in two, two we, can, we can say, if somebody dies, you can divide rights and obligations into two. There are rights and obligations which get terminated at the time of death. And there are rights and obligations which get transferred on the date of death. The law of succession is not interested in this category of rights and obligations. The law of successions, there are some rights and obligations which can never be transferred to somebody else. But in Amist Kanabaru, the status of being a husband cannot be transferred. If somebody is a brother of another person, that brother would be transferred to each other. It is acquired, it is a right which that individual acquires as a result of the law of marriage, but it cannot be transferred. If somebody has a right to elect or to be elected, it is a constitutional right, but it cannot be transferred. There are so many rights of this type. There are so many rights which can, because of their nature, because of their very nature, cannot be transferred to other individuals. And so, you know, you don't have to be mad, but to not be mad in detail. They're not interested. The law of secession is not interested in this category of rights because those rights and obligations will definitely terminate on the day of death. The opening of succession does not give life to these rights and obligations. And as you know, the they also use it for hours anymore. There is no point that can be covered. There is, no, there, is, there is nothing left that will be regulated by the law of succession. Both the be done, both the be time period. Therefore, when we talk about the law of succession, we will not be talking about these types of rights. Therefore, you have to be very careful when you have case of law succession, you have to classify rights first. The first thing you have to try to do always when you deal with succession issues is try to categorize rights, make a balance sheet, a balance sheet of rights and obligations, and try to make a distinction between rights that are terminated on the date of death and rights that are terminated on the date of death. Those rights and obligations will not form part of succession. The law of succession is interested or rights that are transferred. And rights that are transferred form part of inheritance. The rights 
as well as the obligations which are transferred to the heirs are called the form the Nibbana in arrogance. This is a legal concept which we will be dealing with. Inheritance and milon, packaging, unpack the marginal concept. That's what we'll be trying to do. We'll try to unpack the concept of inheritance. Right, so the obligation is unknown. Therefore, within the category of inheritance, and we'll try to answer who takes that inheritance, what that inher inheritance consists of, and many other related issues. Manual inheritance, master, and the promoter, and the promoter, and all those things will be the, the, the issues we'll be discussing during this semester. But remember, we are interested in inheritance and nothing else. Nothing else. The inheritance was in my government rights and obligations. There will be rights and obligations, the obligations that do not fall within the category of inheritance. If they don't fall within the category of inheritance, we will not be interested in them. Not that they are not that important, but they are very good for within the element of the law of succession. The law of succession is interested only in, in inheritance. Inheritance means right of obligations, but the right of obligations that are not terminated at the time of death. Therefore, uh, I think for purposes of convenience, for purposes of convenience, we can classify rights and obligations into three broad categories. Uh, we can classify rights and obligations into three broad categories. The first category would be rights and obligations that get terminated, that die together with the person. The personality gap, the time they are so much related with the concept of legal personality, they cannot survive that concept. Therefore, when that concept of legal personality becomes to an end, so do the rights, so do the rights, so do the obligations. They cannot live without the owner of those rights. They are so personal, they are so personal, they can never be transferred to somebody else. This category of rights and obligations, we can consider them as one package. That category of rights and obligations, the most like joint child. This falls under this category. The second category of rights are rights and obligations that are transferred to the heirs. There are rights and obligations that can be transferred, and there are rights and obligations that are transferred to the heirs and legalities. No rights to be transferred to the data. We'll see that uh, more uh, shortly. This is a second category. And the second, the third category is a category of rights and obligations, but those rights and obligations will not be transferred to the heirs, but to somebody else. Can be, for example, the wife. Or it can be husband. I'm not trying to look gender insensitive. When, when we take examples, uh, we have to be, I know we have to be very careful that uh, and the Ethiopian those poses are not successors. So let's think, uh, the third category uh, consists of rights and obligations. Right, so those rights and obligations can be transferred, but they are not transferred to the heirs. They are not transferred to the legatists. They are transferred to somebody else. What I shall want to say, you meet another friend that. If you had read the judgment, uh, you would have seen uh, this category. In case you know me, but it's not in my mind. It's not in my mind. Are you clear about this categorization of rights and obligations in two, three broad categories? We have rights and obligations that terminate on the date of death. Not the date, but the time of death. We have rights and obligations that survive the deceased, meaning that 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 carry on, that are carried over to the heirs, to the legalities. And we have a certain category of rights and obligations that are carried over, but not to the legalities. They don't form part of the inheritance. They don't form part of, part of the inheritance because they are transferred somebody else. Therefore, they are covered under different 
other laws. They are, they are covered, they are discussed, they are considered in different kinds of law. The Msali Ali Sabatagasimo, if an employee dies, that employee, the relatives of that employee, would be entitled to some compensation. That compensation is covered by labor law. If somebody uh, dies in a car accident, of course the relatives will be entitled to some compensation. Those compensations will be covered by the law of courts. If somebody, if a pension individual dies, relatives, the suburbing the relatives will be entitled to some amount of payment. But that payment is governed by the law of pension, not the law of successions. So let's see, the inheritance, the law of, the, the law of successions is interested in inheritance. Inheritance means rights and obligations that are transferred to the heirs and legal. Anything that's rights, some rights and obligations can be transferred, but that they, they might have been transferred, transferred to not the heirs, but to somebody. Then suddenly, and if, some, if a husband dies, for example, we will usually kill husbands during this session. I hope many of you will agree. If a husband dies, the wife is not an heir. Under Ethiopian law, wives are not heirs. Neither are husbands. If the wife dies, the husband cannot succeed his wife. Therefore, spouse, spouses under Ethiopian law do not succeed each other. But that doesn't mean they are not entitled to any kind of payment. But that payment does not fall under the payments. So let's see the law of succession in the law of consumption. Because now, China, the law of 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 the 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 rights and obligations of the deceased, which form the inheritance, shall pass to the heirs and legatees. Rights and obligations which form the inheritance. The rights and obligations which form the inheritance. Rights and obligations which do not form part of the inheritance are not the subject matter of the law succession. But anything that forms part of the inheritance is transferred or passes to heirs and legatees. What do you think is the distinction between heirs and legatees? Who is an heir and who is a legatee? From what the two of you said, an heir is a successor who acquires rights and obligations by operation of law. Is it? Who succeeds the individual because of the will Is that what you wanted to say? Yeah. To the law of succession, that's why I, I wanted you to think about it. Yeah. Rights and obligations that form inheritance are transferred to either of two categories. Neurotic talent, neurotic talent for the man. Property passes either to an heir or to a legal. Where the heir of the law? Why? The legal. Who is an heir? An heir is someone who succeeds by operation of the law. Who picks the heirs? The law picks the heirs. Who picks the legatees? The legatees picked by the deceased. Uh, when? If the deceased makes a will, who's the answer to the law? As to I call it, Nakatana says it. Then we have a legal. If the individual doesn't make a will, then we, what do we have? We have heirs. Try to remember this uh, distinction. Uh, I'm sure you will, you will get used to these uh, words, to these concepts as we go further, as we go deeper into the law of sensations. But for, for the time being, try to remember that there are two categories of potential successors. There are two possible potential successors. The first potential successors are the heirs. The, the other potential successors are the 
gigahertz. And the question which is central in all legal systems is on which one comes first? Which one do you think should come first? If X decides, we have legalness. If the law decides, what do we have? We have X. Can you want to get my money to return one? The money to return to me, of course, will be the center of our discussion during the law sessions. And we'll briefly see in the next second that this is the action and that's the one in my one. Remember, it suffices to note for purpose of Article 826 that any property that forms inheritance, part of the inheritance, is transferred either to legatis or to the heirs. When legatis not certain, when the heirs not certain. If somebody is not a legati, if somebody is not an heir, if he doesn't or she doesn't fall in either of these two categories, then he's not, or she is not entitled to get anything on the basis of the law of succession. So let's say those who are not the ones who are 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 the ones who what else is that individual supposed to prove? That individual is supposed to prove that he is either an heir or a legal. Therefore, that an individual, the, uh, we must, there are a number of inter interrelated concepts here. We must have death, we must have inheritance, we must have legality or an heir. <coughs> That's what we are going to see in the forthcoming sessions and the forthcoming provisions. Let's see Article 826 a little further. What have we seen so far? So Article 2 of the rights and obligations of the deceased which fall the inheritance. Only those rights and obligations which fall the inheritance are interesting on the law of sessions. Anything that does not fall within the concept of inheritance is irrelevant. Inheritance here one another, the law of succession is the Inheritance here one another, the child is considered to be Therefore, we have to always ask you, sir, does this fall under inheritance, under the category, under the package of inheritance, or is it something else? If it is something else, of course, it's not interesting for the law of succession. Also, I can tell you, the idea is one of the It's very important. Uh, and of course, that inheritance will be transferred to either to heirs or to legates. Heirs are successors determined by law. Legates are successors determined by the deceased. By the deceased. It's not they are not determined by law, but they are determined by the deceased during his lifetime. Therefore, in principle, individuals are allowed to pick their own successors. Individuals are allowed to pick as to whom to give their property during their lifetime. Law of property, I will say that you are. Law of property, I will say that you are. Owner of all, well, to be an owner, ownership is all. You know, the, the, concept of, the concept of ownership gives three fundamental powers to the owner. Ownership power, it gives three powers. It gives the right of users, workers, and abusers. Let me balance what's my relation. Let me say. And of the, one of the third power, one of the three powers of ownership is the right to dispose of your property. And so on, mobile, can you mobile with us or each other? Mobile with us or each other? Chama and also add Chama and Natalia to each other. Add Chama and each other. Legally speaking, I don't think anyone would be that stupid. The right to be stupid? Yeah. <laughs> the law of succession is an extension. An extension of law of property. Uh, to what extent 
አንድ ሰው በህይወት ይያለ ማስተላለፍ የሚችለው ነገር ከሞቶ በኋላ እኛ ያለው የሚፈቅድ የሚፈቅድ እንዲ ይያከስና ነው ሱፐር ሰርቮታል ያኔ ኬስ ጀነራል ስፒኪንግ ሌት ስፒክ ጀነራል ፎር ዘ ታይም ዊል ሲ ዘ ዲቴይልስ ወይ ዊ ክሮስ ዘ ብሪጅ ባት ጀነራል ስፒኪንግ አን ኢንዲቪጁዋል ኢዝ አላውድ ቱ ፒክ ዲዝ ኦን ሳክሰሰርስ if that individual fails to pick his own successes the law picks successes for the middle of the government only for the family details exceptions we will see them afterwards but in principle legal uh, successes are chosen by the deceased because we are talking about rights and obligations of the deceased that are required during his lifetime it is for him to be or it is for him for her to pick her own rights, her own successes. But if that individual fails to pick successes during his lifetime or her lifetime, then of course the law will pick one and we'll see how that is done by the law. Uh, well, the last part of Article 826, uh, we already uh, discussed it. Public rights and obligations form part of the inheritance, unless such rights and obligations terminate by the death of the deceased. If rights and obligations terminate by the death of the deceased, of course, those rights and obligations do not form part of the inheritance because they are already terminated. The law, therefore, the law of inheritance, the law of succession, is interested in rights and obligations, but only in those rights and obligations that survive an individual, that survive legal personality. Legal personality, the law of succession is here. But for what we can gather from an article 826 is an introductory provision, but it tells us so much about the law of succession. It tells us that succession opens on the date of death. It tells us that uh, death is to begin with an important event for the opening of successions. It tells us that when death, the very, uh, when death, the event of death uh, occurs, happens, the succession of that individual voters on at the place of his principal residence and the choice of residences, the picking one residence as a principal residence takes, will be dependent on the provisions of the law of persons. And of course, that article two also makes a very broad distinction between rights and obligations that terminate and rights and obligations that are transferred to the successors. It also tells us broadly again that rights and obligations, which do not terminate on the date of death, are transferred either to the legal case or to heirs. And the choice, of course, depends on the deceased himself. This is a very productive statement, a very productive provision, and all the subsequent provisions are, we will be discussing about 300 articles, and all those 300 articles uh, and sub articles are interested resolving the basic issues around Article 826. But that details the general, we say, is the idea.